I'm 24 and I grew my net worth from negative 15k to over 100k so far in my 20s and a good portion of that net worth is made up from my investments. Every time I talk about this I feel like it really overwhelms people who maybe don't invest or they don't think of themselves as an investor and that's why I'm creating this video to hopefully show you that it's not as intimidating or it's not as scary as you think to start investing. A million and a half questions over on TikTok asking me what my different investment accounts are, what I'm invested into within those accounts. So I'm going to be breaking all of that down comprehensively in this video. Hopefully by the end of this video, investing doesn't seem so intimidating for you because as you're about to hear a few years ago, I had literally no idea where to even start when it came to the stock market. I thought that in order to invest in stocks, you had to like know what stocks to pick and then sit on your computer and like physically trade them all day. And that is so far from the truth because I don't do any of that and it really is a lot simpler than you might think. Before we get into my portfolio, let's start with how I got into investing to begin with. Because again, like I said a few years ago, I had no idea where to even start. I really didn't even know like that I should be investing or why. On the age of 20, I was on Honestly, just dating this guy that happened to be a financial advisor With that he was super financially literate we just kind of started having more like open and honest conversations around money he was really into the whole like financial independence idea and I had no idea what that was he told me pretty early on in our relationship that his goal was to be able to retire by 40 and in my head I'm like okay my parents are 65 and they still don't know how they can retire and you think you're going to be able to retire like 25 years earlier than that and that's when he introduced me the whole idea of like investing in your 20s is so much more powerful than investing in your 30s and 40s because of compound interest and time in the market and all of that which all of that essentially just means the earlier you start investing the exponentially more powerful it is because of compound interest now this video isn't going to be an entire deep dive on like stock market fundamentals or why you need to be investing I can make a separate video on that but if you feel like you do need to learn that here are the exact resources that helped me learn and helped me like get in the right mindset about why I should be investing those two resources are books these are two of the first money books that I read and two of the most impactful money books that I read specifically about investing the first one is rich dad poor dad I feel like this book gets a lot of hate because of the author but it is a really great money mindset book the second one is the simple path to wealth if you think investing is too complicated too scary this book really does a good job of breaking down how simple it actually is to build wealth anyway back to my story about learning about money after about three months of my ex-boyfriend kind of like talking to me about money telling me why I should be caring about money he was finally like okay you need to open up a Roth IRA he literally held my hand through the entire thing like told me what app to download helped me set up my account asked me what amount I was comfortable starting with and since like he was my boyfriend and I trusted him I was like okay I'll put $500 into the account and like you can invest it for me. He went into my app and he purchased some shares of an S&P 500 ETF. And I didn't know much of what that meant, but all of a sudden I was an investor, literally just because I had someone to walk me through the entire thing. So hopefully that's what I can do for you guys. So in that scenario, let's break down what he did for me. First, I said Roth IRA. That is the investment account that he wanted me to open. In order to purchase any investment, you need to do so inside of an investment account. And generally there's two types of investment investment accounts, retirement accounts, and non-retirement accounts. IRA stands for individual retirement account, so an IRA is a retirement account. A Roth IRA is a type of IRA. The word Roth just stands for the tax advantage that's associated with the IRA. Essentially for retirement accounts, the government wants to incentivize you to invest for your retirement. They give you some like tax advantages for contributing to those accounts. I won't go into like all of the ins and outs and nuances of the Roth IRA, but essentially it has wonderful benefits and it's great for beginners, but definitely take a minute to look at the rules of the Roth IRA before you would put any money into it. Second, I said that he purchased shares of an S&P 500 ETF. So the ETF, ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. It's a fund that's the asset. It's like a stock would be the asset that you're purchasing. A fund is also an asset. So an exchange traded fund or an index fund or a mutual fund. Remember I said at the beginning that I thought that in order to be an investor, you had to know what stocks to pick. Well, you don't have to do that. And that's because of these funds like ETFs and index funds. Funds. A fund is essentially just a basket of stock. So the S&P 500 ETF that he purchased, a basket of stock, and that basket of stocks represents the S&P 500. So you purchase one fund and you get a very small piece of all of the stocks that are within the index that you're purchasing. Again, if this sounds overwhelming and you want to learn more about all of this, the Simple Path to Wealth does a very, very good job of breaking all of this down. The author wrote this, I think, for his like teenage daughter. So it's written in super simple language. So definitely read at least a few chapters 
covers of this book. So that was a few years ago. Like I said, I was 20 years old and now I'm 24 and I have almost $70,000 in my investment portfolio. So we've come a long way and let's break down what each of my investment accounts currently are and then what I'm invested into within all of them. The first account that I'm going to be talking about is again the Roth IRA because that is the account that I started with when I was in college. Since this is the Roth version of the IRA, the money that you're putting into this account is post-tax money. With a traditional IRA or a traditional 401k, you're putting in pre-tax money. So that's the tax advantage is that you don't have to pay taxes on the money you're contributing this year. But it's the opposite for a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k. The money that you're putting into it is post-tax. You're just pulling money from your checking or your savings account, putting it into your Roth IRA. You pay the taxes up front, but then when you go to withdraw the money in retirement, you don't have to pay any taxes on the money that you're withdrawing, which is really great because as your investments are growing and earning you money, you never have to pay any taxes on all of the growth inside of your account. You can invest up to $6,500 a year into your Roth IRA, but there is an income limit. I think the income limit for 2023 for a single person is $153,000. Income limits and the contribution limits change year over year. I have my Roth IRA account with Charles Schwab. Who your account provider is really doesn't matter. It's just all about like which platform has the functionality that you're looking for. There's a lot of really great providers out there. I do love Schwab, Fidelity, Betterment. I can make an entire separate video on choosing an investment account provider. So that is the first account that I invest into, but what are my actual investments within my Roth IRA? I already kind of mentioned this, but really just ETFs. So just like my ex boyfriend when I was 20 years old purchased shares of an S&P 500 ETF kind of like continued on that strategy because that's like what I knew today I really only invest in total U.S. stock market ETFs and total world stock market ETFs again not to keep mentioning the same book but if you want to know why this is my strategy the simple path to wealth like really does a good job breaking it down but most of the ETFs inside of my Roth IRA investment portfolio are VOO, VTI, and VT which are the ticker symbols for the ETF. Just like stocks have ticker symbols, funds also have ticker symbols as well. So VOO is an S&P 500 ETF. VTI is a total US stock market ETF, which means that in that one fund, there are thousands of stocks that represent kind of like the overall performance of the US stock market. And then VT is a total world stock market ETF. So again, just within that one fund, there are thousands of stocks that represent the overall performance of the total world stock market. So every country outside of the US. My total balance in my Roth IRA is $22,257. I'm actually no longer contributing to my Roth IRA. I said there is an income limit to be able to make contributions and this year I am over the income limit which is definitely a good problem to have but all of these contributions were from the prior. next investment account that I started investing into in my 20s was a 401k and yes if you have a 401k, you are an investor. I think people forget about this. They'll be like, I don't want to invest in the stock market. It's too complicated or it's too risky. And I'm like, well, if you have a 401k, you probably are invested into the stock market. My 401k is through Vanguard. Since the 401k is an employer sponsored account, I didn't like choose Vanguard as my account provider. So if you do have a 401k through your work and your employer chose your account provider and you just need to like create a login and go access it that way. I am no longer with my last employer. I am now totally self-employed. So I actually can't keep contributing to my 401k either. However, since I am self-employed, I can set up and access a solo 401k, which by the end of 2023, I do need to set that up and I will be rolling over all of my 401k money into my solo 401k. Your 401k, you can invest up to $22,500 for 2023. And a 401k, again, is pre-tax, so it's pre-tax money going into the account. But some 401k providers now offer Roth options as well, which is really great. So you can decide which tax strategy works best for in my 401k, I am invested into 50% small cap stocks and 50% large cap stocks. Now, I actually went in and like manually chose these investments in my 401k. But if you've never done that, if you're like, oh my gosh, I've been working for a couple of years and I like never picked my investments, that's probably fine. A lot of 401ks do automatically choose an investment for you. And that's usually something like a target date fund. I think it's a good idea to maybe like log in and check what your 401k is invested into. But a target date fund essentially automatically builds a portfolio for you based on how far away you are from retirement. So if you're like in your 20s and you're super far away from your target date retirement year, your portfolio will probably have like mostly stocks and a little bit of bond. And then as you inch closer to retirement, your portfolio will have more of a split between stocks and bonds. My total 401k balance as of the time that I'm filming this video is... 
$23,311. And like I said, I can't currently contribute to this 401k, but by the end of 2023, I really need to sit down and open my solo 401k. I'll be rolling over all of this money into my solo 401k, and then I do plan on probably maxing out my solo 401k for 2023. The next investment account that I'm contributing to this year is a taxable brokerage account. Like I said at the beginning, there are generally two types of investment accounts, retirement and non-retirement accounts. Taxable brokerage account is not a retirement account. It's just literally a fancy term for like a regular investment account. So since it's not a retirement account, there's a lot less rules on how much you can invest and also when you can withdraw the money. But with that, you're not going to get those same tax advantages as you will with like 401ks and IRAs. I opened my brokerage account when I was like 22, but I never really did a ton with it up until this year. Coming into 2023, I probably only had like maybe a thousand dollars in my brokerage. But this year I've really ramped up my brokerage account investing and that's really because I did have extra income to invest. Now, what do I actually invest into inside of my brokerage account? My brokerage account investments are the exact same as my Roth IRA investment. So I'm investing in the exact same ETFs in my brokerage account and my Roth IRA. My brokerage and my Roth IRA are both with Charles Schwab. So when I log in, I can see both side by side. And again, in both accounts, I'm mainly just investing in VOO, VTI, and VT. The total amount in my brokerage account is currently $20,500. $11 and I do plan on investing a little bit more into my brokerage account by the end of the year. The last investment account that I have is a little bit less traditional and it also makes up the smallest percentage of my overall investment portfolio. I use the platform Fundrise to invest in both private market real estate and also venture capital investments. So like pre IPO companies. Fundrise is sort of like a crowdfunding platform. They basically give individual investors like you and me access to some investments that are typically only for accredited and institutional investors like the big guys in the companies this post is not sponsored I do love Fundrise and I've worked with them in the past probably a year ago but this particular video not sponsored in my Fundrise portfolio I just started investing this year but like I said I invest into private market real estate and also their innovation fund in order to like directly invest into their innovation fund you do have to be a Fundrise pro member which is a $10 monthly fee so that's something to consider my total Fundrise portfolio is $2,700 $767 and I'm really excited to keep investing into this account as well. That brings my total investment portfolio as of October 2023 to $68,846. I hope this video was helpful to kind of break down what my different investment accounts are and what I'm invested into within those accounts and I hope it helps you feel more confident to actually call yourself an investor because it really is that simple.